Up next, our review of Medium, the mind-reading card game from Greater Than Game. All right, first off, I need to note that I was given a review copy of Medium by Greater Than Games, and they were also awesome enough to give me three extra copies to give away to you fine folk. One, we're giving away locally here in Windsor, and two more we're currently running a contest for on our webpage. If it's before March 11th, 2020, when you're hearing this, head over to tabletopbellhop.com to enter. All right, Medium was designed by Danielle Dealey, Lindsay Sherwood, Nathan Thornton. It features art from Sarah Kelly, was produced in 2019 by Greater Than Games, and there's another company I forgot to put in here. It's on the back. Let me find it. Storm Chaser Games. I had Mo for not fixing that in the notes. I fixed it on the blog post, and I missed it, because Storm Chaser retweeted my review, and I'm like, who's Storm Chaser? And I'm like, oh, they made the game. I missed that. And uh, Board Game Geek didn't have them listed. Like, they're listed, but they're under the more section. So, yes, thumbs up. Storm Chaser, this is their first game. Greater than games to put out many games, many great games. They're the publisher. Storm Chaser made it. Anyway, uh, this is a party game that plays two to eight players, either separately or on teams. Games last about half an hour, depending on the number of players. If you want to see what comes in a copy of Medium, head over to YouTube and check out our unboxing video. For those of you who haven't had a chance to watch that yet, what comes in the box? All right, on top of everything, once you list the cover, you'll find the rule book, full color, 10 page book, glossy pages. Uh, main rules are only six pages long. And then there's plenty of variants and in the back of the book. And there's lots of examples, pictures of the cards, components. Uh, solid rule book, nothing to complain about that there. Under that are a bunch of punch boards. All of these just have scoring tiles. Uh, interestingly, these are also glossy. This is a recurring theme. They're all like coated in a thin plastic film. They were well cut, but I did have one chit that like took some of that film with it on another piece, so I had to cut that off afterwards. But like they're they're definitely coated with something shiny. Uh, under this is a pack of sixteen cards. These are your ESP special power cards. Under those are a bunch of dividers, and under that is one plastic baggie, which is cool because it's something to hold the score tokens. And I am always impressed and pleased when companies include baggies in their games. And thankfully, it's becoming more of the norm than the exception these days. Yeah, I totally agree. It is great to see. Box inserts and baggies. And I think part of it are companies going, man, other people are selling this stuff and making money on it. We should be doing it ourselves. And I totally agree. Under that, you have four rather thick packs of cards. Uh, these contain the word cards from the games, and they're split into 15 different sets. Now, the cards are kind of unique because they stick to that whole glossy thing, which is a bit of a problem because it makes them rather slippery. Now, this is great when shuffling. It really is. They shuffle really nice. But you got to actually be a little careful when stacking the deck. We've had a few slide. Now, other than the gloss, the cards are decent. Uh, they're not the thickest. They're not quite playing card thickness. And they're a little sparse. I personally couldn't help but think the words could have been bigger. Like, it looks like they picked the font to fit the biggest word. But they could have just, like, put them diagonally or even more, make the cards landscape. And then you could have made them the width of the whole card. Uh, not a huge problem, but just something that just... It seems like for a word game where the important thing is how the reading the word, they could have done better. Yeah, indeed. For whatever design reason, they've gone with the words taking up a vanishingly small portion of the actual card. Now, I don't doubt that they tried other variations in the design, but the final choice does seem to be an oddly small print, a lot of wasted negative space that essentially cost money, to, you know, make a game with a lot of dead space. I guess maybe it doesn't cost anything to print in white because the cards are already right white. I don't know. Uh, under everything else is what ends up being a rather serviceable cardboard insert that does a really good job of keeping everything safe. Um, in our unboxing video, like I shook the heck out of this thing and nothing moved. Um, it's also worth noting that the box is designed to hold sleeve cards for those of you who prefer to play with protection. Now, the insert was rather subtle, and I think you nearly missed that they even yeah. had an insert the very first time you opened it up or at least how it was going to work <laughs> yeah and then those dividers are just oh, yeah. the right size <laughs> yeah yeah this is one that I, I now know there is an expansion out it's not going to fit in this box now the expansion box looks like it might be a little bigger so i'm thinking both might fit in the expansion box but yeah the dividers it's it's a tight fit uh they actually have to lean just slightly but they do. The, like I said, you, the divider, which I did, I almost missed it. It's like a flap that's flattened down. You actually have to kind of pull up to, to finish the insert. All right. Well, 
So how does one play Medium? All right, you pick out a number of sets of cards, remember they're 15 each, equal to the number of players minus one, shuffle them together, then you put these broken crystal ball cards in the bottom third of the deck. Those determine when the game ends. Give each player a hand to six cards. Now, these cards are single words. Pizza, Halloween, pirate, morgue, spot, potato, hotel, astronaut, etc. Um, just think of what's in common on all those words, and that's, you can start to get what this game is about. Uh, starting with the player to the left of the starting player, they're going to look at their hand and put a card in front of them and say the word on the card. Then the starting player is going to look at that card, look at their hand, and play a card from their hand and say the word on that card. Then it's up to the characters to make a psychic bond, stare at each other in the eyes, and both simultaneously, after counting down three, two, one, say the median, the word that connects the two words on the table. Three, two, one, say it. Now, if they both said the same thing, they made the connection, they take one of the scoring tokens, it's got a one on the back. Now, if players fail to make a connection, they get another try, but this time they have to use the words they just said, not the words on their card. And they can't use any words that are already in play. Now, if players succeed on a second try, they take a number two scoring chit. If they fail on the second round, they get one more chance. And again, using the two words they just said, but not using any of the words, either the cards or stuff that's already been said. And a match on this one, they take a three. Otherwise, it passes to the next player. Actually, either way, it passes to the next player. Players then draw replacement cards, and the game continues to go around the table until those three cracked crystal ball cards are drawn. Once the third card's drawn, you finish the round and flip over everyone's scoring tokens, which are slightly randomized, like a, a three token, I think, is a four, five, or six. Or sorry, a one token's a four, five, or six, whereas a three token's a one, two, or three. Add up your points, and it's the pair with the most points that wins. Yeah, it's an interesting game, and some of the text on the box uh, seems odd to me. Uh, like, they, they talk about finding the medium word between two yeah. cards, and to me... That is a, like a medium. A medium is 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 something very specific. It's sort of a you know an almost mathematical definition. Whereas the concept of a medium being is you know the psychic idea of a medium connecting with another player in that you know mystical manner makes a lot of sense. Finding the medium word between two words to me is nonsensical. It doesn't actually mean anything. Um, but it's the you know it's it's what they've gone with on their theme. And uh, so that's what yeah, that no. is. That, that's their pun, yeah. right? That's what they call it, is you're trying to find the medium. You're trying to find the word that's in common with both the words. Yeah. or trying to find a word, word or set, set of words. And one thing that uh, should be noted is that within each of the 15 sets of cards, the words within that deck are not related. No. Uh, basically, what they did is they built 15 word lists and then separated them so you get sort of, you know, one in each across so between two decks there will be some words that are in common but within the deck there isn't really any obvious connection no. between them um so uh quick to set up quick to play and about as easy to score as you can get you flip your cart your yeah. token over add up the numbers you got and you're done yeah very simple and the scoring that actually kind of works which is surprising there's a lot of party games out there where you just toss the scoring out the window i could still see doing this but you know what it works now, the first time I played Medium, it was with the Bellhop team, Sean, Deanna, and I, and I think everyone listening probably realizes we're not really the target market for this game. None of us are really party gamers. Uh, but by turn two of our game of Medium, the three of us were laughing. Like, not just laughing, ha, 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 no, but laughing that full body shaking, can't catch your breath, trying not to fall out of your chair style of laughing. And it was then that I realized that this game is a hit. Indeed. This game works in a large part because of what the players themselves bring to the table, even more than what the game does. The game is a tool to help the players express themselves and often in hilarious ways due to how the decks are built. So since that first game, I've now played medium with other groups of gamers at other player counts. I got to say so far, it seems like it definitely plays better with more than three. But then once you get past four into five, there is some downtime. Because only two players at once play. So with five players, you got three people sitting there not playing. Now, it should be entertaining enough to watch the people who are playing. Plus, if you're playing medium in a social situation, right, where people are having drinks and talking anyway, this is probably fine. Those other three people talk amongst themselves and socialize. But if you're going to break this out, like on game night, where everyone's sitting at the game table ready to focus on playing, some of those gamers may get frustrated by this downtime. 
So the, the game really relies on. Uh, sorry, while I don't think any of us have played it two players yet. No, um, not yet. Haven't you had can a chance. Clearly, you can clearly see how its amusement would start to tarnish pretty quickly. Um, but in a pinch, it could be a quick way to you know spend a kill a couple of minutes, uh, a few minutes. I I probably should try it two player, but it doesn't interest me. It's a party game. So yeah. there I have there I have lots of two player games. There are two player games meant to be played with two players. Party games aren't two player games to me. I, I'm not saying that it doesn't work with two. Maybe it does. I've heard people who've had fun with it at two. Now every group I have tried it with has enjoyed it. Uh, I've yet to have anyone hate the game. Uh, even people who I thought were going to hate the game or thought themselves they were going to hate it. As we said, the games are really simple to teach. Um, usually after about three pairs like three sets of people going, the game kind of clicks. Like there's definitely a level of, oh, okay, here's a better way to come up with words that make easier connections. Like there is a bit of a trick to play medium, uh, which is very dependent on which players you're playing with. Uh, and what I did find is that each successive play, it's easier to come up with the, the medium a little better. Uh, one of the secrets is to kind of zoom out. Like don't, don't say uh, Gandalf, say wizard as an example. And once everyone starts to get that, the game seems to flow a little better. Yeah, the game really relies on the shared connection you might have with your partner, be it shared experiences, uh, educational background, or just life experiences. Yeah. Uh, it also should be noted that this game can get blue. So a session zero of some sort before playing, just to make sure everyone is on the same page, can go a long way to avoid any awkwardness that might pop up if, you know, you got a couple of uh, strange cards come up. Yeah, this is the same way that like uh, almost any party game can go there, right? Apples to apples. This is not explicit game. This is not a for adult game, but it can go there with certain card combinations. Now, I mentioned this already. I was surprised the scoring system here works. Um, though, despite that, you might want to toss it out and just play it as an experience instead of a game. And then Deanna noted uh, one of the things is the crystal balls. She'd be more tempted to throw those out just because the game does sometimes seem to be a little short, whereas without them, you can just keep playing until you're sick of playing. Overall, I am having a lot of fun showing off this game and playing this game, um, despite being pretty bad personally at making connections, it seems. Uh, the rare one does happen. But you know what? I'm having fun even when it fails, just to see the words that people are coming up with. And I yet have I have yet to experience that boredom because I've always been very interested in what the other players are coming up with. If you're into party games at all, just pick this up. Like, it's almost a no-brainer. This should be on your shelf along with code names and the mind and the game. If you dig word games, I also suggest this, because this is one of those, if you're into this categories and the, the oh, what's this silly one where you make up definitions of words? Like, if you're into those, those type of word guessing games, again, uh, probably worth picking it up. But if you're like me and not a big party gamer, I'd suggest checking it out. Like, find out if anyone's doing a demo. If you're in Windsor, I'm doing one this weekend on Saturday. But come out, try to see if you can try the game out. This is the kind of game that once you experience it, you'll know after the first play if it's for you or not. Yeah, so one thing we discovered is you do need to be focused for this game. Well, you can yeah. take time before, the count, before you do your shared countdown to think. Some people got flustered and would say something other than what was intended in a moment of panic once you hit that, you know, once you said yeah. one. But that adds to the hilarity, if not your score. Yeah, it's definitely one, like I said, there's a knack to it, right? And there's a, a level of social comfort that is required to play well. It might take a couple plays for you to loosen up. Uh, Deanna, in particular, had a little difficulty grasping the game at first. Not grasping it, she got the game. But it's that, it's that social, the anxiety, the timing element, the, the mind blank. And when we played at Easy Mode on the weekend, she at first backed out, didn't want to play at all. She's just like, no, no, I don't want. And then we started playing with four people. And then she jumped in because she saw other players having the same problem. And she's like, all right, it's not just me. So it just took that bit to get going. For a more in-depth look at Medium and a chance to win your own copy of this game, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Reviews.